This video is all about melodic house music production tips. You hear? I'm here. Let's go do it right now. Hey yo, what's up, I'm in Little Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe, hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you will not miss out on anything. Stay tuned till the end of this video, I'll tell you all about Patreon, I'll tell you all about Discord and I'll tell you all about the Mixer project and I'll tell you all about the Kitchen Club, there's so much good news. Thanks to all you new subscribers out there, the channel is growing, I'm happy that you like the content. Uh, let's keep it going, right? So, on melodic house music production and some tips. Basically, I'm just gonna go in and I was working on a track that I'm going to perform tomorrow night if you're watching this premiere right now. So, obviously, uh, there is the first kitchen club that I'm going to host with Lockte's playing, I've got Holy Thursday's playing, there's Yellow Bull Line, so that's three patrons already that's all, that are on the lineup, it's cool. I've got uh, guys from Rotterdam, from the Worm um, uh, place, this is another creative place, so I've got like, there's a bus driving from Rotterdam to Dordrecht, so it's, it's going to be a, a crazy thing, uh, obviously, and I'm working on this tune. I was thinking, okay, um, yeah, are there some tips and tricks that I can give you on how I get to a full track on how I do it. Now I've been over these things before but I've only given you chunks of information. Now it's more about like okay this is the kick, what do I need to stick on top of the kick and then how do I metabolize what is happening after that? Why would I choose a piano over anything else? How do I get inspired? Where do I get my inspiration from? So this video is containing a lot of um, uh, nuggets. Let me know in the comment section where you get your inspiration from, how you're handling things. And uh, if you're ready, I know I am. Let's go over to the live set and let's see if we can make it work. You ready? Let's go get it. Welcome to uh, this, um, yeah, this setup. Okay, so I will briefly go over what you can see here. If you're new here, thank you for watching. Um, pretty much what I have got uh, structured is, I've got the subsequent 37 over here. That's going to play an intricate role. Uh, the OB6 is here. I've got the mini tower here. There's an octa track. Then there's an Akai MPC Live Mark 1. Over on this side, I've got two pedals. The Blue Sky Strymon is here. And then the Space Echo RE20 is here. I still haven't decided what pedal I'm going to get. Thanks uh, to all the subscribers and people that were watching by giving me suggestions. Uh, you didn't make my life easier because now I'm still contemplating what it's going to be. But you know, we're getting there slowly but surely. And what you can't make out on the screen, but what I will explain uh, uh, in detail, a bit is the setup that I've got on my kick drum. Um, and I will tell you where uh, the sounds are coming from. Okay, I've got a, um, um, a multi-clock sitting right here, uh, of which I'm only using channel one and channel two. <clears throat> Cause usually I will connect the Octatrack and the Akai MPC together. But today, um, or the, lately my setup has changed in a way that I wanted to have like control over the different band members. So. Um, the tip that I'm going to give you today is how to set up. I mean, this is not going to be a completely sort of new topic, but um, delving deeper into the things as I'm migrating my set towards more shows that I'm doing, uh, mainly the Kitchen Club, which is tomorrow night here in uh, Holland, in Dordrecht. If you're here and, and you're watching this in time, do make sure to come and check it out. It's in Dordrecht, it's it's in the Energy House. It's going to be an amazing um, uh, event. Um, and I'm working my set and then next week I'm playing Hunkering Festival. So that's another big one that I'm doing. So obviously my setup is constantly changing, migrating from one place to the next. And in that sense, the tips that I come across is something I'm going to just like uh, share with you today. So the multi-clock plays an intricate role here because on channel one, I've got the Octatrack. Now the Octatrack is taking care of my drums and we can quickly go over how I have set this up. There's also a mixer here that I forgot to mention. That's a DM12. Um, it's a Midas mixer. Um, and then uh, attached to that is um, an API lunchbox uh, with two modules in it. I've got the 550B, which is an EQ, and I've got the 525, which is a small mono form factor of the 2500 API compressor that they're using, their flagship compressor. Underneath, I've got a Neve 1073 preamp that I've built myself. It was a kit. Um, 
So it's a 10... Uh, 73 well you know the 1073 comes with an eq this is only the microphone preamp um now connected to the line um inputs and uh because i the mixer is going through this the kick drum is going to the api so kick drum goes straight from the octa track where it's coming from on the q out i'm using one of the two q outs going into the um api launch box and then going into the eq first EQing it there, so basically I'm just like taking a little bit of the top here, nothing too dramatic, and then I'm taking a little bit off on the low end side of things as well, um, and I'll um, tell you how I'm structuring it as we get um, further into the video. I'll probably tweak it so you can hear what my setting for the kick drum is here, and then there's uh, a little bit of compression, you know, just a little bit. Um, um of the compression that i'm going to stick on the kick as well to just like condense it down a little bit so i'll turn it off and on and then you'll hear what, what it's, what's going okay drums so i've got my octatrack right here as i said the octatrack is being split up in a way that track eight is the master output the master output meaning you have to just give up one of the two one of the tracks uh in order to use it as a master sort of like setup and then in studio mode you can then have two different outs you've got the q out and the main out which means that you've got like two stereo outputs that you can use for different purposes as you have like two inputs as well i'm not using the inputs on the octatrack today but um in a future video i will definitely see if i can root stuff going out of the mixer into the input so that whatever i'm doing i can loop it on the octatrack as well and just like spit it back out again so that's a cool feature that's something that we are uh, going to look at in the future now the track for melodic house melodic techno progressive house however you want to name it there's a few things that you need first what i've done is to get my drums going i'll start with a kick obviously so that's on track one so my track is playing, bam, bam, and one, one, so, two, three, and four. Now what I've done on the kick, let's check, I think there's, there's conditional tricks on the last step. So the, these, the, the, the last steps, da, 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 it doesn't play all the time. With conditional tricks you can tell it um, in a probability kind of fashion, like when do you play, when do you, when, when, when don't you play so i'll put it on 50 percent which means only going to play half of the time so that a four bar pattern will now become an eight bar uh, pattern which is cool uh four bars will turn into eight bars because the first of the um uh, first round it, those the, the last ones they don't play right like here now they're going ba -ba -da -ba. so you can see that they're playing right now that's the kick um, to get some sort of a melodic content going early, I will use something on track two, which is over here. Do I have anything playing over here? Yes, I have it. But on the mixer, let's go over to that side of things. I have got um, a few things mapped away. The kick is always going to be separate yeah, on track one because I want to have my kick, control over the kick. So if I need to just turn it off, EQ it a little bit, have more control of the kick right there. Then there's the snare drum on channel two that's not coming from the octatrack i'm using the snare a snare drum coming from the akai mpc we'll get there in a bit now this the stereo outs are being mapped to tracks three and four which means that i'm there you go so you can hear that my tom is already playing some sort of melodic content there is an 808 hat that is being flanged so that it's going up and down in your ear. So when you've got speakers in the club um, and they're spread out widely, it brings a little bit more space into your production. So this is, you can hear that it's going all over the place. I like it. Um, then you need some sort of hats, obviously. I've got delay on my hats, yeah? So you can hear that there's delay on the hats. Why? Because I do think that if I've got track four here, it's very sparse if there's no delay on there. It's cool, but I like it. But I put the delay and uh, on the send is even going up to 64 or 62, what was it? Yeah, and the time factor's on 48. So it keeps repeating in the beat. So when you stop your groove, 
put them. You have some sort of a break or a bridge or something, your beat just doesn't cut off immediately. And that's handy if you want to just do something, switch something, make a breakdown, do something like this. Turn it off, two, three, and turn it on. So that's the trick that you can do with the octa track. That's why I've got delay sitting right there. Track five is always going to be a sample that I'm using coming out of one of the sample packs that I have created. This is coming out of the sample and hold stuff pack, which means some sort of hypnotizing kind of bit. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. It's being played in the middle between tracks. So this I would do if I'm switching to a different track and I'm lowering most of the music because uh, the colored um, faders that I've got right here are my synthesizers, right? But first, let's focus on the drums first. So I'm going to turn on the... This is a snare coming from the MPC Live. Pretty dry. I can go in and say like on my track 2 here, I've got my snare so I can... So, there's a bit of a groove already going. Turn it off. One, two, three, go back in and... Nice. Now, the way I set up the MPC Live is that this is only handling my music portion of things. So the music and a bit of drums that I can alter are here. Because this is my drum computer that I just want to have running about, yeah? So, kick out, reverb. Nice. And I've got a clap on six, similar thing. If I go to track six over here, and I see that I've got claps right here, delete them. Now they're gone, let's play them. So now I can play live, and I can just like play claps right around one with a lot of delay on them. Take out my kick here, play around with the claps. Lay it around the reverb, take them out, click on, two, and. So again, just like giving yourself longevity, giving yourself options to move around. So that's what I can do with this. There's more you can do with the Octatrack, of course, but for now, I'm just using it this way. Now, on the pattern side of things, this is my second track. I'm using four sequences for one song. Um, now I've only got two, or I've got four sequences here, but the first three I have programmed already. Now, there is melodic content already here, but I've got a hat that's also playing alongside the hat that's playing here because putting a hat, a 909 hat in delay will definitely mean you're hypnotizing people and that's cool, but you would need something else already. So let's see if I can take out some of the music that might be playing. There's a piano playing, we will get to that in a second. And I think that there's a bass playing. So I'm going to open up the stereo for the Akai MPC Live, on which I, again, I'm using three outputs. The stereo output. It's giving me an old school breakbeat feeling. So what's coming from the Akai? Crash, snare, and an alternate hat. This is a, a limb drum that I've sampled. So you've got a 909 type a drum computer over here and a Lindrum type computer over here. So those two work together neatly. As you can hear, if I'm going to enter my uh, beat back in, uh, like one, two, three, and so like. Now, the trick here is when you take out your stereo for the octa track, then you can go in like, very sparse, you know, easy. So back in. So that's a groove already, right? So the magic is in the tom. When you take out the tom here, it's it's a bit more sparse. So you can understand that that tom is doing a lot for your groove. So find an 808 tom that will always help you out. As we do like this. Kick back in like so. Nice. Now, 
to make it a melodic sort of vibe, because now we're already going in a certain direction, it's all good. So you can hear that, that that content of the tom is very, very important to help you out. Now, for melodic content, let's go in and do something sort of like classical, get a classic instrument to play, because I think when you work with a classic instrument, it already uh, gives you some sort of a feeling where you're going. So if I want to make um, uh, a track, I'll probably start with playing a piano. Now I've played a piano um, that plays something like this. This piano has got two layers. There's a top layer and a bottom layer. Let's find the notes. The notes are here. So you can see that there is a clear top layer that I'm going to delete for now. Let's take it out. So this is just basic arpeggio stuff. Over two bars is what it's playing. And the top, the top level is only playing the accents. So you got something that's already moving in a certain direction. And the root note is oh, nice. Yeah, so that's going. So when we're going to go back in with all our drums, we're going to go like so. So you've already got some sort of a small bass drum or bass line playing with that tom. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. So. That's already going, right? Um, I'm not filtering anything here because I'm thinking, you know what? This is my first pattern. So, you know, I will usually uh, map this away on a Launch Control XL, which I have got, not got right now, but uh, the Akai MPC Live has got very neat mapping capability. So it, it will be cool to map this to um, a Launch Control XL and then have the piano on a filter or maybe just like build it in, right? So this is my first Sort of like pattern. I switch into this. First, I switch into the beat. This is off. So this is a nice transition sort of vibe, right? So we we have this here. So maybe I'm just pitching this to the beat. Let's pitch it to the beat, quick, fast. So this is my um, uh, mosquito on steroids. Small clap as well on track seven. So nice, you see? Okay, get everything going. Okay, so now that we have that and I transitioned in my track, the next thing, okay, take this out. Here we go. You can see how my mosquito is like uh, gelling everything together. Obviously, you'll probably go into the filter page and then tell you like, you know what, thank you for playing, thanks for participating, and then you filter it out and then you're into your track. So the music will start here, right? Taking out this. I think I've got a bass line already playing underneath this thing because on my first pattern is always going to remain on the root note. Bam, 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 bam. And why did I do it? Because in my arpeggio, there's only two places where they both meet. They meet here, they meet, uh, and here, 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 here. So what you get is like a seesaw, sort of like infinite loop kind of vibe that will work out. One, two, three, four, play around with my snare here, make a long break. Play around with the reverb that I stuck on the master here. One. Two, there's a cutoff as well, so I can turn on the kiss. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and go. What's not to like, right? Okay, obviously, now I would love to introduce a little bit more music. So I'm going to go to my next sequence. Whoa, where are we going? Nice. Let's listen to that bass line in solo without a piano, shall we? Something like this. Boom. 
I've designed this sound myself on the Minitar because I wanted to sit with those bad boys that I'm going to introduce in a second. Now, it's very important to have a sound that does what it does. Sounds round enough, but not that fat that is going to eat away from all the low end content. Now, this Minitar, it takes a while to get used to this machine because, oh my heavens, it is a beast. It's, it's very thick. That's why I'm using it. You can debate, but you've got an OB6 that can do bass, you've got a subsequent that can do bass, it does, but the sweet spot on the higher transients and the harmonics is lying in a different sort of like feel. And call me old fashioned, but I do believe that if this thing was intended to be a bass synthesizer, it says as much, analog bass synthesizer, hell. Who am I to debate the good Dr. Robert Moog, so that's why I'm using it, bass. Listen to that man, how fat is that? And in other videos you know about my um, diode clipper cable, so that helps me set it apart from the other ones as well. Now, now that we know what everything is playing and I've got it embedded on your brain, let's go back to that piano, shall we? Which is on my other sequence, because I've got another sequence. Piano, like so. So, there you go. I'm liking this. Now, obviously, what you would want is that piano, it's a classical instrument and, and we know it, it sounds beautiful and it's this is the beach vibe, right? I'm standing on the beach, I'm having a cocktail, this is the kind of vibe that you would play. When it starts to become a little bit darker and things need to be going in a certain direction, I would suggest to play something else. This is an arpeggio you heard me play before. It's coming from my good friend, the uh, subsequent over there. Very, very tight. Now the trick here, let's do it. Go in and tell my piano to just like a, take a back burner for a second. Listen carefully to those two synths. The trick here, is that they both play the same thing. So as you saw me play on uh, my piano, there are two layers here. Listening carefully to the subsequent, let me open up the filter for you. You can hear that. So the bass line is already there. What I left on the minotaur, I left out the high notes. So that I know for a fact that those two are going to be playing together, but I can play around with the filters and mask them a little bit. So, so that if I'm lowering the filter on the subsequent, the mini tower will start to shine a little bit, but it's always a mental imprint. I will just place that in your memory. You will not even uh, recognize that it's there, but you will miss it if it's gone, right? Because the higher notes will draw your attention a little bit more. So that's a trick that I'm using to give longevity to the beat as well. Let's go in and play those beats again. Nice. So now that we have that, I'm thinking, what else can we do? Well, we have the piano. Let's see where my piano is here. And turn this off. One, two, three, stereo. That means hat and piano. Check, check, check. Nice. A little bit on the loud side, I must say, but I'm not so much mixing the track right now, I'm just like layering everything. Um, what else we got? We've got the green uh, faders here, obviously that's my um, OB6, and then I would think I would play some pads with that, right? So so I'm thinking, what can we need? I'm gonna turn uh, this off, which is my uh, subsequent. Turn it off, let's see what we have here. Okay. Simple. Okay, try it. Two, three, four. Go again here. Maybe I'll read. I'll record it, yeah? Let's see. Two, two, one, two, three, go in. <laughs> Thank you. 
nice one. So now that I've got recorded, got that recorded, I can now play around with the filters, right? Hey, I hear it. I hear a note that's not supposed to be there, which happens. Ooh, multiple notes, I can tell you that. Okay, so I'm gonna go in, try and be tidy a little bit at least. That's gone, that's gone. This one, let's lengthen it, at it end. Bam, nice. Boom, this is what I usually do. I'll just like join all the notes together so that it all plays legato, which means that there's no uh, gaps in between the notes. And you will, you will not make it out so much because there is a lot of release on this on this sound. And delay, obviously. Let's open it up. So, see, the, it stops early on this measure here, as you can see, but you don't hear it as much. You will hear it though if you're doing similar stuff with paraphonic sound sources, which means two um, oscillators that you can play from the subsequent 37. The two oscillators, you can play them in harmony, um, but then they all need to be as uh, evenly uh, spaced out because otherwise it's not going to work out well and you'll hear it jump and do stuff you don't want really so um, I'm not going to bore you with 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 spacing everything out but well well yes I will because I've only got one more step left to do nice so okay mom okay bear with me here nearly there that one Woo, nice uh, another thing which is very 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 important is to save the track because now we've got stuff already so this is the information this is the information this is information and this is information so i've got like one two three four sound sources and they all do something different so this is drums this is music and this machine my mixer here does an intricate part in my song structure as well because obviously if you just want to go in Heads in the speaker like, okay, it's four in the morning. I am so still in, at this party where I was supposed to leave two hours ago. Then this probably is. Sometimes you'll have to make a drop like that, right? Um, if I'm gonna go out and say I'm gonna go to the piano, which is here, turning that off for a second. Uh, there's multiple outputs. I can stick um, the piano on a different uh, uh, channel if I would want to, but for now, I've opted to go like, you know what, let's leave it at that. But it's not ideal to have the head and the piano on the same thing right okay but anyway so the ingredients kick snare that snare is something that I'm definitely going to map away to a launch control Excel so that if I'm hitting my note repeat it's going to just like um, play uh, a drum roll because now I have to just go to the drum roll uh, page and, okay. which is not a problem it makes it live but you know what I mean so these things you can automate out so we've got the kick so the stereo for the um, octa track is this so that gives you a little bit of that the breakbeat kind of uh, vibe and then obviously uh, taking uh, the piano out for a second just focusing on the drums then we've got um, that hat over here that just plays a I'm this is just giving me an old-school sort of like um, Give me love kind of vibe. Remember that record gave me love. It had similar eyes. So that was my inspiration when I started to play that. When I come up with with inspiration for my tracks, most of the time it is, uh, um, yeah, uh, coming out of the records that I've got like behind me. I've been DJing for such a long time that that certain things I remember from playing them out in the club uh, on, on my many journeys. Um, and I just knew that they were working. So for me, it's not so much the case of always trying to come up with something new. Uh, I just like to go for something that's been proven and that works. So, and in the end of the day, as much as you're trying to copy most things when you stick it in your own music, nine out of 10 times, people are not even going to recognize it from the source where you got it from. So uh, don't be afraid to borrow stuff. Don't blatantly steal stuff, that's different, all right. And then I played that 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 snare in a, some sort of a break attack. Very old school type of, I think Chicago vibe of, of playing that snare, you know? Like doom, 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 doom. It's got that old school drum computer flavor and then make it a little bit modern with 
with, with the delay and the flanger. So the other worldly bits are coming from the stereo here, which is also connected to that reverb, right? So that's a lot of stuff that I can do with my drums. One, two, three, back in. Nice. Now I'm trying to keep it simple. I can just go out and just like make a whole track and just like program it in, in song mode and then the song will just play, but then I'm halfway there by ordering a, a laptop and just sticking it on Ableton, which is not where I want to go with this. I want to just like keep it fairly uh, live. Uh, and what you can also do is have certain sequences, the sequence pages here, in here. Usually you will just like create a whole song out of these. I'm just limiting myself to a few so that uh, I'm more or less being forced to just do something live. And on certain sequences, the tracks are being assigned, but there's no notes being played. So if I will go to a different sequence, I can just now play something live and then just like go out and go to a different sequence and play um, the sequence that I have performed. If there's something that I'm not confident enough about that I can play it, or it's something that needs to be reproduced. If I made a track and the, and, and the hook has been something that I've been crafting on for hours on end, um, then obviously I will just like uh, play that MIDI over there. So that's my approach. Now, I'm trying to just like keep in that hamster wheel. The hamster wheel being, thinking of an ostinato sort of like a uh, rigid pattern. My first sort of like, you know, this, 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 this row over here is always going to be the first sequence of my track. And I'm always trying to just like keep it as simple as possible, right? So I'll keep it here. Let's see if I can switch fast. Two, three, it's going in. That's the foundation. This is something, when people are on the dance floor, it doesn't take away from them, it adds to the groove. I would think that a bass line has, has to be twofold on melodic house. It has to be first, something you hear, second, something you feel, eh, it's threefold actually, something you hear and recognize as melodic content, secondly, something you will feel, so when it's bass, it needs to just uh, hit you in the gut a little bit, but the third point, it needs to be something that is percussive at first. Bam, 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 bam. So that's a drum already. So this is giving everybody the intention, like, okay, it's emphasizing my groove. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. So it plays, some, it plays around with my snare. Very old school. Bam, bam, bam. And not that old school is key, but when you're using synthesizers like those, it's best to just like stick where they most of the time work best, right? One, two, three, back in. But also keep in mind that Tom is playing an intricate part here as well. It's, it's some sort of like the CIA uh, gangster in the room. It's been sitting there for ages in camouflage. You don't even recognize that it's there. But when you, once you take it out, one, two, three, back in. Also another trick why I'm um, using the multi-clock in that fashion sometimes the sequences don't align. If you're using long sequences here, this has been eight bars with the con uh, with the uh, conditional tricks and all. And if this switches around or it does something weird, or you go into a pattern that is four bars and you, you, it doesn't align, and then you want to restart or reset so that both of them start at the same time, so your track aligns a little bit more, uh, then it's handy to have that delay going, like so. Back in like, see, so you get a little bit of a break. Even if you got a 303 or something else that has got its own sequencer or, or a drum computer that you're bringing, that's four different tracks on there. I'm always using it that way because sometimes I'm going, oh, I'm overfeeding my brain, where am I going? So I'm already trying to give myself options. As you can see, moving from uh, left to right is constantly what I'm doing without my whole set. Left to right on the mixer, more music is coming in. Left to right on my on my Akai, more music is gradually building up. Left to right on my Octatrack, more drums are being added. So it, it it keeps it simple when you're in a club and you're like, oh my god, I don't know where to start. And this is my first live set, and how am I going to do it? Start easy. See? Here, this is the left, the, the, my first left. It's just a kick. Well, you know, you just come in and then just like yeah, take it easy and you'll just take it from there and see how everything, um, yeah, metabolizes. All right. Um, I guess that that's that, right? Uh, hopefully the, this was uh, helpful and uh, leave a comment in the section below. All right. Yay. I would like to welcome Nick 
Kylie, Kaylee, am I pronouncing that well? Oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry if I butchered it. And Jason Melton as my new patrons for this week. They follow me around on patreon.com slash analog kitchen. I'm building a mixer. We're ordering parts. It is happening. It's really, really happening. I'm so happy for it. So uh, me and Christian Vossen, uh, or I should say Christian Vossen and I, yes, sorry, no. Um, we are actually now in the process of like looking at what are we going to do. We, we, we know what kind of size um, box we want to use. So we're, we're in the process of building our prototype, right? Um, so we know how the inline channel is going to be. We know how we're going to put our, um, our EQ section and uh, the multi-clock section. And there's so much stuff that's going to be on that mixer. If you want to know more uh, and you want to have a say about it, you know, uh, go and join up at patreon.com slash analog kitchen where we talk about that stuff and more. We talk about modular stuff. We talk about everything. I'm so happy and proud that I've got a community that is absolutely growing. Not only is it growing, you can see that with the events that I'm doing that people are actually finding each other now. So it's cool. You know, I mean, it's cool for me to just see like Holy Thursday flying out from London to come and play vinyl over here in uh, Holland and then, you know, a Lockte. And, and so the thing is, this has to be a traveling circus. We're going all over the place. I have got confirmed um, confirmation of Paradigm in Groningen. So we're going to head out with the, with the uh, kitchen club over there as well. So um, it's cool. I'm thinking Danny is coming tomorrow night. Danny He's also a patron. I'm thinking, um, uh, well, so some more, more, many more people are going to come. So it's going to be some sort of a Patreon meetup as well. So, but the thing where we congregate is Discord. That's where we talk to each other. That's where we hang out. That's where we have video chats. So after this video, a bunch of us are going to just like talk shop, and it's going to be cool. I think uh, I need to check out where Holy Thursdays is because he, he, he by now I think he's, he's entered the country. But he told me he's going to just find some stores where they uh, sell extended cigarettes and see what's what so uh, there you go. okay um if you would like to get in touch also leave a, a, a comment in the section below uh, like and share this video if that's anything else analog courses that's another thing that i would like to talk to you about on um, this month we're going to finalize everything that's going to happen there because i can imagine that if you're watching these videos there's a lot of stuff that you can gain from them but at the same time it is pretty much me going uh, as I'm going along and just like telling you about that stuff. So if you would like to have a, a form factor, sort of like educational step-by-step -step thing of getting into certain pieces of gear, there's an Octatrack uh, thingy that we're working on. There is a, um, uh, um, MPC uh, one uh, tutorial. There's so many different tutorials that I'm working on at the minute. Um, and for a discounted, uh, price at this limited time um, you can enroll so it's going to be finished towards the end of this month so that's analogcourses.com now um, what else yeah if you're in the country if you're in my country um, come and say hi I'm doing, doing a lot of shows so obviously just come and say hi and let me know that you're watching the videos uh, as I said before like and share and if not anything else uh, either I see you tomorrow night kitchen club uh, here door drag or I'll catch you next week. You know where? You guessed it. On another video. And look at you. Out!